Hello my friends and welcome back to Real Scale Legacy of the Void. We are going to the Pair of a Dune and I am real excited. I don't know exactly, I guess, I don't, <laughs> I don't even know. You don't really get to see this ship much, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, okay, so it might not be an editable asset, unfortunately. <laughs> and it's just the tip of the ship. Yes. I don't think there's anything scale-wise in here, is there? No, looking at real scale, Solendus isn't really that exciting. Oh, look at that. Look at that, we got so much money! Okay, we're gonna do the autocast, we're gonna do the warp in Probius. Oh, they're gonna expect us to have a lot of stuff, aren't they? Interesting. So one thing that I would like to do is I'm going to try to kill the bases, because they're really hard. Oh! 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 Oh, my heart is feeling so happy! The shield battery will restore their shield. Oh! These defenses will indeed Guys, shut up. We have to talk about pylons. Priority must be to clear the power cells of creep. Are this the deploy pylon. Unpowered warp gates nearby. Constructing Okay, they're just going to talk forever. Would restore their power, giving us an advantage. This is amazing. Dune's deploy pylon ability would be Man. ideal for this. If Carax would just shut up. Probes can always warp in pylons as well. Got to work on that economy. We can begin warping in warriors from Carax, shush. <laughs> Deploy pylon, three second cooldown, 25 energy. Just how it should be. This is amazing. This is so good. I'm so happy. Look at all these pylons we're deploying. Oh, this is great. This is phenomenal. We're just going to keep getting these guys. Darn toot, and we can. And every gateway has the three charge system. So kind of like they do on normal and hard, normally. And also, uh, there's something that I missed last time that Orca pointed out to me. No supply. Workers do not cost supply in this mod. The reason I had an odd supply and was confused is because the zealots were one supply, and I hadn't noticed that yet when I said what I said. So the auto build worker thing, pretty darn cool. We get a lot of charges on our zealots. I'm just gonna make sure a big, big group of zealots at the beginning. I feel like, I feel like these guys are fantastic in the early stages. Probably once AOE comes into the picture, not so much, but we're not there yet. That's not where we live. I'll just keep dropping these pylons. There's so many of them. This is what pylons should be. Cheap, easy, affordable, something fun for the whole family. Oh, the zealot is so good. I love it. Man, I don't know if you guys feel the way that I do, but often the zealot just feels really underwhelming in StarCraft 2 compared to its StarCraft 1 equivalent. This feels more like a StarCraft 1 zealot, and that is amazing. It's already so juicy. Ah. Oh. All right, let's get a chrono on here. We're going to get all of our upgrades. And I'm going to do this mission the normal way for the most part. I'm going to, like, do this, do the defense, etc., etc. And then let's take a look. So the Mutalisk is small. And that's one of the reasons it looked like we were having an issue. The Stalker does bonus damage versus medium. So we don't actually have a unit that does good damage against medium. Photon Cannon's doing 40 is pretty darn good, though. They seem like they're going to be pretty viable. So they two-shot Hydras, they one-shot Zerglings, and then they actually still take uh, quite a few shots to take down our friend, the Muta. So I'm going to need a decent anti-air contingent. However, I'm feeling pretty good about moving out and doing the first objective at this point. Go, my soldiers! And we take all this down. Uh, Orca did mention one thing in the tooltip. I read it and I didn't say it. I don't know why I didn't. When a zealot is charging in this mod, it takes reduced damage, which uh, makes sense. It's cool. So if you charge into Banelings, I'm not sure exactly sure how it works, <laughs> but we're going to test it. <laughs> one little guys. This is bigger than normal, isn't it? Wait. Oh, there they are. Warp prisms approaching our nexus point. 
stalkers. Eliminate those warriors. Oh gosh, we're not going to be able to kill these fast, are we? Oh no! Okay, take it down. <laughs> it's a long kill time. <laughs> it's like a boss. Oh, that's awesome. Alright, so one thing we should do is go grab those bonus objectives now. Actually, I have a feeling that we're going to get hit pretty soon. If I were a game designer, I would design the game to attack me, because it's been a bit. So we're going to withstand one of those strikes, and then we're going to move out onto the map, and we're going to grab our extra bonus objectives. Yeah. There we go. Oh no, zealots! What are we going to do? How good are Dragoons? 175, 150. Ooh, Dragoons are tanky! They had some extra words on there, too. Dragoons seem like they actually might be worth using, especially when we have to actually, like, support other units. The Stalker feels like it's better on its own. Because it's got that nimbleness to it, but the Dragoon with a bunch of just good stats might just be a core combat unit. Interesting, I like that. How good's the Immortal? 108 versus large. <laughs> so much damage. Oh, the Immortal is going to be awesome too, isn't it? I don't even know what the Vanguard is going to do, but it's probably just going to destroy the entire planet every time that it fires. It's like it does bonus versus large. <laughs> they forgot to uncode the planet as large. Uh. One thing I really like here is the charge system with the gateways in tandem with the Chrono Boost. One thing I personally find issue with is when you have a bunch of gateways and you can only Chrono Boost a fraction of them, it often feels really bad because then you desync all of your gateways if you want to properly macro. At which point I often just give up and don't Chrono Boost my gateways or I wait until I have enough Chrono for all of them, something like that, which is not it's not ideal, and it feels like I'm being lackluster either way because of this annoying inconvenience. However, when it's a charge-based system, all you do is accrue charges on one of the sides more fast, which allows you to really get all your production working at the same time. And I think that's wonderful. I think that's really, really cool. It just, it works better with the mechanics of the warp gate and it feels better to use. I know from like a balance perspective, having long distance warp ins in tandem with the ability to bank up charges is not fair for a multiplayer thing. Oh, there we go. However, I think that in the single player environments, it just feels much, much smoother to play. I think that warp in is a little bit clunky either way. I kind of wish there was a reason to just sit in gateway form. No! Okay, charge. See how you do. I can't see. <laughs> the overseer. It's just so big in there. Oh, what a guy. Okay, we are going to go try to take down these bases for a couple reasons. I'm not going to lie. Part of it is I'm doing it in order to test out the limits of the game. Part of it is that I'm not allowed to play more than one mission per day now because Orca has uh, work he still has to do. He wants me to finish the mod before the end of the month, but he also wants me to, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, that's a big scout. Take it down. Oh, it's very bulky. Got it. We just have timing constraints, basically, so we're gonna go try to do the hard stuff in order to stress test the missions, because I don't want to have a eight minute video. And I could probably speedrun this in an insane amount of time. But this base seems like it'll be pretty, pretty tough. They always are. Oh, our first Archon. Wait, jump over there, take that down. The Archon went down. How much do Archons do? 90 versus biological in an area. Okay, these are priority one targets. They are small, but they are powerful. Oh my goodness. I think we're going to win this fight off of the back of our Blink Stalkers. And our reinforcements. But those Archons did insane amounts of damage. I'm glad I did this, actually. It allowed me to actually understand the threat of the Archon before I get farther into this campaign. 
where it would probably be a game ending threat if I didn't deal with it perfectly. If I'm going for like a high zealot count sort of thing. Good information to have. I like the fact that the scout feels actually kind of good. Like, it's definitely built to take down small targets in this mod, but it actually seems to be pretty solid at that. It's not a meme. Unfortunately, we're never going to be able to build any of them, which is a shame. But I, mean, I can't complain. We did take down this base. We could even expand to it if we wanted to. Do we want to? I mean, why not? We're thieves. Then I can get more zealots. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, this is how we see how good the cannons are. Wow. Cannons are good, man. I... It's one of those things that I know that oh, when the unit has, you know, 7,000 HP or something, the cannon will be useless. But against tiny stuff, the cannon is good. I don't remember where all these come from. Obviously the ground. Alright, they just come in an arc. I'm hoping these cannons are just a- Oh, that's a lot of zerglings! Never mind! We need some zealots to help out. Oh, that's a lot of zerglings. I like it. So the zealots, once again, are proving that they have a lot of worth just from their ability to actually fight zerglings because there's so many of them. Stalkers can't really do that effectively. Alright, is down. This one was way harder than I thought it would be. Okay, we're gonna head over here. We need to make sure we don't lose our economy. That's the most important thing. Oh, my economy! Alright. I guess I'm not expanding. I'm, I'm a one base man. Uh, we're gonna need new cyber core. That was rough. <laughs> I need a lot more zealots so I can just cleave through stuff more quickly, honestly. Where are those scouts? Gotta be heading towards my base, right? I don't really see another option there. I'm scared of them. I'm very scared of them. I have so many warp and pylons, I need to be using them. Oh, it's three second construction time, not cooldown. Okay. <laughs> Warp and reinforcements is really good. Oh, here they come. Okay, their damage against ground isn't that high. That was an easy fight. Game throwing a softball at me. Use that time to rebuild. I love rapid fire warpins though. Oh, they're targeting my weak guys. Not bad. Now there are gonna be a couple things like ultras near the end of this mission. We're gonna move out, start fighting some other stuff. Let's uh, take down this power cell next. The stalkers are very quick. Are they faster? Are they 2.95 versus 2. Yeah, they are faster. So this is like old school StarCraft. It used to be that the Stalker was always faster than the Zealot, even in multiplayer, and it was it was very annoying. They changed it largely as a convenience thing. Oh, we didn't charge, so we're not getting that AOE damage reduction. But the Ultra got cleaved through. Remember that the Zealots reduce armor. Or rather, they ignore armor, which is a very powerful ability against the Ultra. Oh, ooh, big lag spike. Let's get back. Almost finished, Hierarch. The Spear of Adun is nearly online. Only one cell remains. Enough. Let's see. The end to the cycle of infinite madness has come. 
Cease your struggle against the Salvation Hide Brain. I'm going to have this be the mobile force. This is going to be the defensive force. State thy bidding. And we'll see how it goes. Okay. Go over here first. Oh, take it down before the warpins. Good, good. Oh, they are right on top of us. So the stalkers need to target fire, and then... One thing I'm noticing here is that with this easy, easy pylon stuff, like the uh, upgrade that gives you benefit for being in pylon power, I actually think that might be really good. It's going to be so easy. Oh, line's getting broken. Try to utilize chokes. We got those down. Just a little bit more. Oh, that is a hybrid. Oh, no. Oh, dude, look at him. He's fancy. No. Why is he floating? Oh, let's drop some pylons to distract. Okay, things are getting a little out of hand. I'm going to have to take down Mar Jr. over here. Marl's Jr. <laughs> Jeez. What if people watch this garbage video? <laughs> Marl's Jr. Uh, it's, uh, for everyone on the East Coast, that's Marty's. <laughs> this is such a niche American joke. Oh no, I've lost the international audience. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, we're gonna Chrono boost a warp gate. We're gonna figure out how to. I don't think I can kill the Zerg base. I think that I dug too deep and greedily. I'm gonna have to go figure out how to win this mission with a very fractional army at this point. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna keep it going. We got all the warp gates. We can head over here. I don't know what this guy's for, but I might as well have him. I'm push in a bit. Maybe we'll get some cannons to help with the hybrid. I like that idea. Take that out, and then... Oh! Why he got so big blasties? Uh, he fly! They fly now? Okay, he's not that bad. We had enough stalkers. And we had enough bad Star Wars references. There's more of them, though. And there's got to be more of them. So we are going to try the cannon thing. How much? 30 damage. Void carapace. How long is a cannon's build time? 40 seconds. How long is a forge? 45. This feels longer than... Oh, I'm building a gateway. That's why. <laughs> Never mind. Let's just go. I think I dealt with the bailings not too bad. So he... Oh, he's got a cloak! Okay. Okay. Blinky, blonky, blunky. Oh, okay, well, I guess we gotta end the game. <laughs> this was closer than I ever thought it would be. I thought I was gonna smash through it, but it became a pretty tough day. Oh. Power transfer completed. The spirit of Doom is ready to depart. Let all firstborn free from Amon aboard, Facemate. We must free this world. We have to survive. I've always thought it was lame that Blizzard never showed the full scale of the Spear of a Dune. And that's not Orca's problem. That's not his fault. There's nothing he can do there. Because then it just teleports out, right? I haven't watched this in like a day. Yeah. It too fast. Though, <laughs> it would be funny <laughs> if <laughs> they got modded <laughs> If anyone knows the opening of Spaceballs, <laughs> where it's it's a Star Wars parody from like the 80s, and 
they have the ship that just keeps going and going and going and going for like a minute and a half. It'd be so funny if <laughs> the Spear of Adrian just keeps going up and up and up and it's actually 75 kilometers worth of spaceship. That would be so good. Oh, it would take so much work. It would not be worth it and I would adore it so much. Please never do that. <laughs> Oh, man. My guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And I want to say something before we sign off. Everybody in the comments section was so positive towards Orca. And when people are, like, when these mods are happening and people are, like, super excited for the modder and are being really nice to them, it makes me feel so happy. I really appreciate it. And I just want to say thank you for that because... It's probably my favorite thing to see is just when people are jazzed up and excited and they're not being like super nitpicky and angry with the modder about, oh, well, actually, this is 0.32% not big enough. It's like everyone's just like, oh, this is cool. We're having a fun time. And that's what we were. And thank you, guys. That's it's really cool. I appreciate that sort of community. And I hope that we keep it running. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace.